you talk about Not Scary Farm 2022, you cannot leave out one of the, the reigning, defending, undisputed scare zone of the year for 2021, Carnival. And with that, this next guest, uh, a rather familiar talent that you've seen wander the streets of Not Scary Farm. Most recently, Carnival. He goes by the name of Booster. How you doing today, thank my you, friend? Thank you, thank you. I'm just glad to be here. Um, I'm super <sighs> excited to get this going. I'm I'm excited. Welcome to day two, Scare Actor Appreciation Month. Uh, yesterday we had the uh, opportunity to sit down with the, uh, your girlfriend Michaela, and we talked a little bit about the grimoire and whatnot. So that was a lot of fun. Um, and now today we get to talk with you about Carnival and in your experience with with uh, your haunt realm and whatnot. Oh, it's been quite the experience. Quite it the it really has. It really has, man. It's been it's been a it's been a great year, and today we are also joined by none other than Mr. Samuel Martinez himself. Sammy, how are we doing today? Oh, it, it is a beautiful day. Um, today is October twenty fourth. Just uh, appears uh, uh, an appearance from behind the veil. Uh, although you're seeing this on November second, um, I made some great pork chops today, uh, which uh, caused me not to be able to be in the first one because I was cooking. A little bit longer than anticipated but i'm excited to be here this is my favorite time of the year um after we get through a great great haunt season we get to really just show our love on this channel for the third year in a row with scare appreciation month and there's nothing more i love than uh pouring our hearts and souls back um and, and not just doing this to for for the fans of the channel but also doing this to show love to those scare actors who put their bodies souls blood sweat tears you name it on the line for us each and every day uh for a, a glorious haunt season so i'm excited to sit here via zoom with uh with booster and dive into the psyche of what makes a monster a monster let's oh, yeah. go let's, let's go. go booster oh, long motivated. long time fan of the channel um and we uh we just found that out this year uh after uh connecting up at midsummer screen this past season and now we get to see him we've been fans of him for a while but now we get to see him on the uh the carnival streets as new um as new friends and whatnot and he's a new another new one for this season uh new uh, new uh guest that we have on the show and we're very excited to get uh to know him so booster Tell us where it all started, man. How did how did this love for haunt come to be for you? It's kind of an odd one. Um, it started in my high school theater class. Hey, we're fellow high school theater people as well. Yeah. So the the way it happened was, I was in my senior year of high school, and I got rejected from my the uh, musical theater class. Oh no! And I was. At first, I was like, oh, man, like, this is my passion. This is what I love to do. Acting is my thing. I have to figure out how I can keep this going. So so I joined some Facebook groups, and then I came across an ad for immersive horror experience looking for actors. Um, many of you know who made it. John. Other things, but that's where I started. And from there... Um, Actually, before I even started there, I've never been into horror. Like, I've been too scared to go to a Nas. I've been too scared to see, like, horror movies. Like, Minions has been my thing. <laughs> Minions? Let's go. Uh, yeah, Minions has been my thing. Minions and Trolls. And so I started working there and just seeing how these guys that I meet backstage as a human can transform into this monster and literally change people's lives. I was like, that's amazing. Like, I, I fell in love with that right away. And at first, I was there to, I was sweeping floors, um, cleaning up the blood. And then I worked my way through it to all three of the owners, actually. I've been with Murder Co. I couldn't say since day one, because I'm not one of the day one guys, but I've been there since year one. And um, from there, I've just developed this, like, love for scaring people where outside of character, I'm just another regular human. But when I, as soon as I put that mask on, the look people give you is so different. And you can see it in their eyes too. And it's a combo of like 
why did I come here to do this? And like, wow, I'm actually having the time of my life. And from there, um, I've met a lot of people that worked at Scary Farm and then they kind of told me the process and got me into it. And I was like, that's something I'm like definitely interested in. So I stepped away from um, from that place and uh, started my career at Knott's with uh, The Hollows, 2019. 2019. All right, 2019, The Hollow. The sacred grounds of sea ass. Uh, what character were you in The Hollow? I was a uh, faceless soldier or also known as a pirate. Wait, they're pirates? No, dude, not at all. But the amount of people that come through and are like, oh my god, there's pirates in this zone? Oh. I was like, oh. I, I was going to say, there's like, it's, it's not even a freaking pirate setting. It's like supposed to be in the 1600s in the middle of the goddamn forest. Like, there's no pirates anywhere around. It's all witchcraft things. That's no. why I was confused. I was like, wait, there's pirates in this? I've gone through this zone so many times and never seen pirates because I love pirates. When I was five years old, if you asked me what I wanted to be when I grow up, I would have told you I wanted to be a pirate. Later, I found out that they're terrorists and not, not good people. And unfortunately, they didn't have a, a, a degree in, in Jack Sparrowing, but, you know. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, the amount of guests that just, oh, my God, you're a pirate? It, it blew my mind. It, it blew my mind. I understand because we have our little trifold hats, but yeah. it, does that really define a pirate to you? No, they look like Revolutionary War soldiers. So like, I, yeah. that's why I was like, wait, I, you're telling me that in 2019, I missed a pirate because I would have been, that would have been my favorite scare actor of all time. I would have been like, who's everyone else? We got a pirate. That guy could have sucked at his job and I would have been like, greatest scare actor of all time. We Top got five B-roll of all time. Top five B-roll of all time. If you there know, you is. know. Oh, and I like, imagine there actually being a pirate zone. I think I'd be, that would be insane. I would love it. I would spend. I would pay to just sit there all day. Six Flags oh, yeah. Magic Mountain this year did a kind of a similar pirate setting called the Devil's Triangle, um, and every now and then Ooh. they had actual pirates on stage like fighting each other and stuff. But like the costuming and the scenic design for that area was just so beautiful that it really immersed you into that. So knots. I I have a hundred percent faith. I mean, after seeing the depths too, I have a hundred percent faith they can do a, a pirate maze or a scare zone to be successful. No, yeah, I 100% agree on that. That'd be insane. That'd be cool. So, take us back. Uh, then you, you, so you, you do this thing, and and you, you really get into the haunt groove. What, what was like the next step after this? What, what was the the next step that to take your haunt career further and and want to get into more scare acting and whatnot? So 2019, I was still in my my actor stage. Coming to knots, I considered it um, another gig. But then at the end of the season, I kind of took a step back and I was like, I think this is what I want to do. I think this is where I want to be. And coming as a guest before this, um, Carnival would always be my number one zone. And I, when I auditioned, I actually wanted to pitch the idea of me going to Carnival. But I was so new, I was like, I don't want to like, say I want to go to Carnival, and then they're like, well, who are you? And then just throw me anywhere they wanted. So I, I took my spot, and CS definitely became my home. I made a lot of lifelong friends there. Um, but then when 2020 hit, it was kind of a blank. Um, didn't really know where I was going to go with this. Um, so I had to really think about it for a little bit. But then we saw that glimmer of hope when not sent out the email. I was like, hey, would, would you be interested in coming back? And without a doubt, I think within like the first minute of them sending me that email, <laughs> I already replied yes. And then so time goes on um, and they're, they're sending out phone calls. And I get my phone call and the, the guy on the phone, he's just like, hey, um, we have a position for you on Boardwalk Streets as a clown. And I literally stopped for a second. I was like, are you sure you have the right phone number? <laughs> and he was like, wait, what do you mean? I was like, are you sure you're calling the right person? And he was like, this is Dominic, right? And I was like, yeah, yeah. I was, I was like, I just, I don't know what to say. I didn't know what to say at the time. And I was like, I, I get to work the exact zone I've wanted. Like, there's not many people that get to say they got put exactly where they wanted coming back. Yeah, no, no, and and that is an honor, especially when you have your eye on something. Like when you're 
initially thinking about Scary Farm and then you're like, oh, cool. I actually like coming from the hollow CS and then going like, oh, you're going to go on over to BS. And it's like, man, like goals accomplished. So that's that's stuff we like to hear. Um, but taking uh, taking you back again before we, we dive in uh, and take a deep dive into the uh, the BS or carnival as they, as they call it out here. Um, when was the first time you, you uh, visited Not Scary Farm? 2017. 2017. Um, yeah, I was before that, never, you couldn't get me to do anything scary. Um, the closest I would get to the scary is watching Ghost Adventures with my dad, but even then I would not really want to be there. Um, have, have you heard of, wait, speaking of Ghost Adventures, have you heard Tony's uh, uh, great impression of Zach Bagans? I, I almost forget that it's Tony and not Zach that I'm talking to. Tony, you want to sh- want to show him? Here, let me close my eyes. <laughs> um, my name is Zach Bagans. I've never been afraid of ghosts until I came face to face with one in real life. Whoa! <laughs> wait, wait, where's Anthony? Oh Where'd man, I mean, they call me they call me freaking uh, Knack Bagans. Oh man, I I almost started fangirling right now. Hey, more you know? than at Midsummer. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, yeah, no, that. <laughs> No, I mean, I think I think for a lot of us too, like not scary farm was like the 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 door that opened for for haunts, you know, like that was the one of the first that was the first haunt I ever went to, and uh, Sammy went a while back too. That was probably one of the first haunts he ever went to, and um, you know, just to see where it all started and where it comes back to, you know, you 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 go into the event, you become a fan, you love it, and then you want to take more more part in it, and you did just that when uh, coming onto the hollow. Uh, so how was that 2019 going into the hollow and, and then kind of realizing like, damn, like I'm on the streets like this is this is unreal. Like there was a lot of new talent that came in in 2019. I remember that year specifically. Uh, we had a lot of new talent going into ghost town, going into a bu- bunch of the zones, bunch of mazes. So like how was it coming into to, to the hollow? So coming into the hollows, um, well, just streets alone. When I talked to a couple people before who have worked the event for many years, um, I got a lot of backlash with like, oh, you're not going to get streets your first year. That's not a thing. You got to do your, your year and your maze and this and that. And I was like, okay. I was like, well, let's see what happens. And then as soon as I got it, I was like almost kind of scared about getting it because I was like, these people are going to hate me. <laughs> but then like literally day one of working in the hollows, dude, everyone is so nice. I was like, I don't even know who I talked to because, like, these, these are not the people that you guys described. Um, everyone was super welcoming. And um, I started out with a prop, and I was definitely using my prop a lot. And some of the veterans pulled me aside, and they're like, let's, let's leave that behind. Let's fine-tune you becoming a monster. Let's start with your walk. Let's start with your noises. And that alone really set the foundation for me on what it takes to be a good monster. Yeah, ever since then, like, like the hollows always has a special place in my heart. Um, sad to see it go, but I'm glad I got to to do at least my time there. Got to be a part of uh, a legacy of a legacy, of scare dude. Zone. Yeah, I, I I definitely believe uh, the hollows became one of the fan favorites that could sit up there on on the high throne. Oh yeah, hundred percent. I mean that that zone too, specifically in the CS area, has always had. A lot of fan favorites come in and out of it, and and it's no stranger to that. So we're excited to see where it transforms to into the 50th, being that the 50th is going to be a giant year, and they're going to probably want to bring back a really good scare zone or do a brand new scare zone or inspiration off old scare zones. Who knows what they're going to do with that scare zone? We're excited to find out, though, because it is the 50th, and they're going to probably go all out with this one, Um, and we're super excited about that. Now, 2020, the pandemic hits. You know, we all – the closest thing to a not scary farm we have was Taste of Following, which actually I think did a really good job of keeping the haunt vibes alive yeah, and whatnot. I mean, walking through CS with that that whole trick or treat trail and then seeing a lot of those iconic props that you've seen around haunt was was really really cool. Um, so that was a lot of fun to even have fog in Ghost Town with no scare actors. It was sad with no scare actors, but you know, just to have that that respect of the fog in Fog yeah. Alley was really cool. Twenty twenty one was the year. Nuts. Oh, yeah, oh, no, bad to you, but no, you're what good. I you're good. Knots is they stay true to their history and they stay true to their roots. Um, the world could be ending, but the history and roots are never going to go away. Yeah, that's a good way to put it. 
for real. The world could be ending. They were like, nah, we're still going to do things the way we do things. Yeah, here's some fog. Um, yep, here's some fog. <laughs> here's some fog. 2021 comes around, man. This is the year. This is, you know, we all waited two years for a haunt season. You know, some of us made do with what we had with drive through events and whatnot, but this was the year to come back for like actual walkthrough events again. What was it like to to get that phone call again? Like you like you mentioned going into Carnival this time around and, and, and you got that phone call, you sounded surprised. What was it like prepping to to get ready to to, to start something new? Dude, I had no idea what I was gonna bring to Carnival. I was I was like there's like I I didn't really have like my brain was processing it from the entire time since they called me all the way up until we started like orientation and doing all of our meetings, I was, I was trying to figure it out. Um, I didn't want to be like the Joker. I didn't want to be like Pennywise. So like, it was, it was weird for me to find my, my roots and what I wanted to bring. Cause I didn't just want to bring another clown to Carnival. I wanted to bring something that people will remember. Cause that's a big thing with me with, and scary is yeah, you have your pop scares that the guests will see a million times a night and they'll have a great time, but it takes that one monster to take that next step to break that wall that'll live with you for a lifetime. And so that's what Man. my goal was coming into 2021. Just coming in like the, the hammer of Thor just got struck down. Coming in with a bang right there, man. I I, I respect it. Bang. Coming in with a bang. I respect it. I respect yeah. it a lot. Bring in the thunder. Bring in the thunder. Yeah, bring in the thunder. Bring in love, the thunder. Though. You didn't bring love. No, love and no thunder love night. No, that wasn't that wasn't a thing yet. It's okay. It's alright. Yeah. He could have made it a thing though first, but you know. Yeah, he hey. could have done it. Um, that's awesome, dude. Going into Carnival this 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 2021 year, I remember us walking through it many times and just just kind of seeing the energy was just different there. Obviously, with everybody wanting to come back to Haunt, everybody uh, being back at Haunt, and everybody just giving their giving it their all because it, it had been two years and a lot was locked away and a lot of people needed to let a lot out and this was the place to let it out and it, it showed because that year you guys would go on to win the uh, Scare Zone of the Year for 2021. So a huge congrats for you to be a part of that. That must have been something special that night when you guys found out. Um, I'm assuming, right? It was chills. Like we had a great leader. Um, Josh really got us. He really pulled us through to that. Um, and it, it was really cool, especially because coming from 2019, um, that was the year the Hollows won Golden Haunt as well. Oh. And so, so he's a two-time um, back-to-back. Technically, you can say that one's back-to-back. Two time back to back champ. Yeah. Um, yeah, it it was great, man. Um, especially with the way Josh leads. He's very to the point, but you know he cares a lot. And all of the talent there, everyone was there to do the same thing, and you can see that the love for the zone was there. The passion like everyone that wanted to be in Carnival was in Carnival and it was it was crazy, man. Like the energy was unmatched. It it was just it was just like a it was a life-changing experience being in Carnival. I bet. Yeah, that, that energy is, like you said, it is unmatched. It is a lot of just very high-energy uh, individuals bringing it to a new level. Um, when you think back to 2021, do you have, like, a favorite memory or, like, a favorite scare from that from that year? I think 2021 was the first year I actually got to drop somebody. Nice. <laughs> It was also my first year being able to slide, nice. and I slid like a madman. It, I, I think I spent more time on the ground than I did on like walking. Um, <sighs> but that was also the year I developed the mullet, which is a, the mullet. I like the, the mullet. mullet. The mullet's a good touch. I wasn't supposed to happen. <laughs> <laughs> I could tell you that. Well, so what's the story behind the mullet? If it wasn't supposed to happen, like how did that how did that come to fruition? So I wanted, I wanted to do something special with my hair that year. So I, I went and I was like, I, I want to try to make a wig. I don't have a crafty bone in my body, but I was like, I'm going to make this wig happen. And the wig I started with was this big, like almost like Afro. And it would just like, just sit on top of my head. I had my wig cap. I had my bobby pins and people would call me the clown that can't see because the hair would just sit in front of my eyes. 
And um, so one night, one of my friends is like, hey, like, let's go, let's go get some food. And I was like, oh, man, I can't put these bobby pins back in my head. Like, I, I got to figure out something to do. I was like, hold on. So I strapped the, the wig on and then I put my mask over it. And um, my friend, he stops me. He was like, dude, that's a mullet. And I was like, what are you talking about? And I was like, he was like, no, you have a mullet on your head. And I looked in the mirror and I was like, yo, I was like, this is <laughs> sick. And then um, as we we're walking to go get our food, people are like, oh, my God, that's a mullet. And like it definitely gained a lot of traction. And I was like, I think I might keep it like this. So, I dig yeah. it. I like the mullet. I really do. Same. I, I enjoy like that a staple. Mullet. It's a staple. It's a it, staple it, of that character. It makes your character very memorable. Um, not saying that you're like taking away from your uh, scare actor or anything, but like definitely it has a, it is a, it is a character choice. Um, yeah, it's a I good agree. character choice, um, and and it it allows the gas from to see you from afar. So, which is super cool, and it allows them to to, to remember you. So if they do walk it through again, and you got them, that's definitely going to make them tremble in them shoes. Um, and when they're coming back, that's what plays into um, when I brought up breaking that extra wall and leaving that. I call it the mental scare. Um, a lot of the inspiration I get from the way I scare, um, more so last year, was from Michael Myers. I like to stalk my victims. I like to stalk them. So you'll look at me, and you know I won't do anything to you at first, but then you'll like see something that stands out, which is probably going to be the mullet. And then you'll walk through, oh, yeah, that was funny. He had a mullet. Next thing you know, bam, I'm right there again. Mullet in your face. You're dead. <laughs> done. You're done. Yeah, you're, you're done. done. You're done. You're done. Done. Uh, I mean, I think I like, and I've noticed that a lot, too, is, like, when you walk away from somebody and then come out of nowhere and just slide and scare the shit out of them, which I thought was really, I always think is really funny because they get really scared. Um what about the overall concept and idea behind the the, the booster character? What was the uh, what was the big inspiration behind that, and and what what do you want people to kind of know from your character and, and how it became your character for uh, Carnival? Um, so this is a big thing I like to I like to tell everyone is especially working knots, the character you start with on day one isn't gonna be the character you finish with at the end of the year. The character I started with in twenty twenty one was different than the mullet maniac at the end of 2021. <laughs> Coming into this year, I was like, I have to bring the mullet back, but I need to get it professionally done. So I reached out to my friend Swerve and commissioned a wig from her. And off the bat with the, my new wig, it brought a new character to what I was last year. This year, um, they swapped me out of the regular clown costume and gave me a jumpsuit. So off the okay. bat, I'm like, ooh, what can I do with this? My, my You're like, ooh, now I feel like more like Michael Myers. Yeah, I was like, what, what can I do with this? Like, um, how, how can I make myself stand out more now than I did last year? How can I make myself a better monster? And so it, it started turning, and I was like, I can start with, like, maybe a rock and roll type clown, rock and roll sad clown. And so I spent a lot of time, like, walking around the zone just crying, and people were like, oh, my God, he's a sad clown. And then um, I was like, the crying's not working. I was like, what, what can I go from there? And um, our TC at the time, he pulled me aside, and he was like, be more aggressive. He was like, you look like a maniac. Kill. He was like, just, just go for the kill. And from there, I went from being my sad clown to being a clown who... I'm not good with words, but I will, I will rip your head off. And um, that's kind of just where I'm developing now. And uh, I'm still playing with things here and there, but I kind of like where I'm at with um, just being able to be that clown where if one other clown has someone cornered, they could be like, hey, Booster, get him. And the next thing you know, you get this mullet maniac sliding and crawling at you at the same time and and just running with it. Oh, man. I mean, I mean, I think we've seen it, me and you have seen it a lot this season, right, Sammy? Yeah, yeah, definitely. We've definitely seen you uh, get some people and get them good. 
Um, one thing I really enjoy about your character is the makeup. Um, when developing the character, um, how did you and like the makeup artist develop the, the makeup for this, uh, for the character? Because it kind of gives me like some, some like kiss vibes. Um, and I know that you had just mentioned like it's supposed to have some rock and roll in there. So was that like the aesthetic or was it something completely different and I'm wrong in everything I do? <laughs> no, I mean, you're definitely not wrong. But, um, so my mask was created by a Jimmy Con, hands down, like, my favorite mask I've ever owned. And, um, I reached out to him, and I was kind of just like, do what you gotta do. Like, I would send him pictures of things I thought were cool, but with me, it's like, my brain will catch on to something, and I'm like, oh, I love it. And then ten minutes later, I'm like, ooh, that's kind of cringy. And so, like, I kind of just let him do his thing with it, and, uh, when I went to go pick it up, it was really my first time seeing it and my jaw dropped i was like dude this is like more than what i could have asked for because he is a maniac when it comes to making masks it's it's almost like he's unstable i mean the mask it really shows and whatnot i actually want to show the audience a little bit uh, a clip that we've captured uh of you on the streets of to get an idea of who who they can look out for in the future or if they've seen him this season this is a clip of booster uh hitting a slide we actually got a couple of those clips this year so this is a real quick clip of booster hitting a slide <laughs> That was uh, that was Booster hitting the slide. Uh, what's been honestly the best part about working out in Carnival? I mean, it seems like the the ground is nice and smooth to hit them slides, and then you're. It, I, I imagine it's also it's got its times where it's really hard because it's a very bright zone, so you don't have a lot of shadows to kind of you know uh, hide in and out of, you know, to to kind of like regroup yourself. You're kind of nonstop as you're out there. What like what's what's been the most fun and the most difficult thing to do in this zone? Yeah. So. Working Car and Eagle alone, I would say, is its own beast. Because not, like, not only is there light everywhere you go, there's not many things to hide around, but also you're a clown. Not many people are scared of clowns. Um, but that's definitely my favorite part of the zone, is seeing how all of this talent here can take all these walls that are in front of us and just completely break them down. The amount of breakdowns I've seen, like, it... It's it's just crazy. You're we're working with real artists here. Yeah. And like you've seen it for sure coming as a guest this year. Um we have some real maniacs in this zone. And it's just that, it's like you hear one song in your head and you're a maniac, maniac all night. Yep. Oh yeah. Oh man. Or a gainiac as they say. Let's go. Let's, oh, go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Yeah, dude. Get them gains, um, bro. Like I said, Carnival's always been the zone I've wanted to work. It's been it's been a real honor to get to work with a lot of these legends. Um, and yeah, my favorite part would have to be like how creative everyone could be on the fly. I agree. Can, I mean, there's a lot of creativity in that zone. You could throw a piece of pineapple on the floor, and these clowns will make an entire bit out of it that will either <laughs> scar you for life or make you the happiest person ever. <laughs> Maybe a bit of both. A little bit of both, actually. Yeah, but you know, Daniel I've seen those? I've seen a lot of a lot of things, especially from uh, a certain clown this year by the name of uh, Lucio. And oh god. Oh man, I I can't even give him a big enough shout out. He, if you look at my character this year, I've definitely talked to him a lot. Um, I I drive a lot of inspiration from the work he's done. He's definitely been a standout character to me, and. The fact that I can call him my friend now is even better. I'm so excited. We get to get him on the show tomorrow. I'm going to do a late one with him, but it's going to be a lot of fun to, to kind of see where his mindset went from Ghost Town all the way to Carnival. So I'm excited to see where, where that mindset has gone. But, uh, you get man, to talk to all just, ten of him. Yeah, yeah, for real. It is, man. It's, or more. It, I don't know how many there are. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, exactly. But it's honestly, I've I've had a pleasure just looking at the entire Carnival staff this year. I mean, it is a, a packed house of talent there, and they continue to impress and they continue to to elevate the game and whatnot. And to see the the talent that were there last year, how, how much they've improved this year, and to see talent that've been there for years and continue to to grow their characters and grow in that zone is just is is phenomenal. And then to see characters like you who have who've made an impact in, in such a short amount of time. 
um, to go on and, and, and let's see what else holds the future for you. I mean, what that's the next question. What is the future for Booster? Do you do you want to continue that that legacy in, in Carnival and, and stay there for a bit? Are you looking to try to go somewhere else? Like, wh- where does where does the legacy of Booster continue from here? Oh man, every time someone asks me this question, I feel like like I'm a high school student picking what college I'm playing football at. Um, <laughs> now Carnival is has been my home for the last two years, and I'm very fortunate to get to work it. Um. CS is always going to be my OG home and the first love of my life at Knott's. But for next year, it's hard to say. I, yeah. I have a lot of things going on in my head that I want to I wanna give to you guys, but it, we, I really won't know until we get a little glimpse into next year. To be continued. To be continued. The Avengers will return? Oh. Question mark. Booster will return? <laughs> question mark um oh. <laughs> I, I, another question i like to to, to to understand here is um when you're when you are scare acting uh, especially like this year um do you prefer to like act alone do you like to prefer to go to pairs groups um and if you are in pairs or groups who do you who do you usually mesh with when you're out there on them streets um so my character is a little tricky and i i hate when i say this but it's not always the easiest for me to interact with a lot of people. Um, a lot of these clowns, or a lot of clowns, have a lot of different bits that they can do. But from the way I built up my character, I feel like sometimes me joining in on those bits will kind of ruin it. But this year specifically, um, we've developed a little trio of uh, me, Swerve, and Oingo, and. I'm like their maniac brother that they keep in a cage. And when they let me loose, it, it all hell breaks loose. And I really like where those bits go. Um, but yeah, I, I love all my clowns. And I, I can try to interact with a lot of them, but those two are definitely uh, my standouts. Hey, those two are good ones. Oingo's a good friend of ours. Uh, Swerve is a, another uh, acquaintance that we've gotten to uh, cross paths with here on the podcast. And she gave us another really good podcast about her her career in haunt and her modeling career and whatnot and and yeah so you got you got your, you got yourself in some good hands there man I mean got some good talented people right there on, on top of the what you bring to the table I mean that's a lot of fun um, and and like I said this is just a zone that we look forward to every single season and this year has not disappointed uh, to see what the, the new cards were put on the table to see who's here and and to see what they brought to the table I mean it was it was a lot of improvement this year. Um, not saying last year was bad. Last year was actually really good. That's why you guys won Scare Zone of the Year. But this year is just like another whole new level of of just things I've never seen before or, or whatnot, and 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 new new things. So new things is always fun, and you guys are continuing to uh, make it more yours and more original, and 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 to have just have a fun a fun time with it. And and I think the guests that go there on a regular basis or or the fans of Haunt just can see that because you guys continue to bring this energy to Carnival that. Um, evidently has won you guys scares on the year once and hopefully maybe we'll see it will probably do it again this year we we don't know yet we've recorded this before the last week in a haunt so let's see where it brings us yeah we're definitely working for it definitely i mean you got one last weekend then let's see what happens uh let's see who comes out the victor of the scare zone of the year but uh it's been it's been quite the season i would say and i would hope you had a great one another uh, memorable one and probably ready to uh fall asleep for another year until you can come back out and play again yeah um we got a lot of things in the work for this off season um you guys will definitely be the first to know about it um we'll, we'll keep you with the updates hey we're here for them man um one last question i forgot to ask i forgot to ask michaela this and i should have asked her i think i was just so zoned out because i hadn't done this in a long time but i think i know the answer because we were talking about it earlier in the in the show uh who, what's your favorite scary movie halloween uh i i can't really say that anymore it's really let me down man but oh man yeah i all the og halloweens the rob zombie halloweens oh he's a zombie fan too i would say the 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 first movie of what went down really fast um they've, they've been my favorite and you know like i said that's that's why I made sure I got him on tattooed on me so he can live with me forever. 
Oh, I didn't know that. That's cool. Oh, yeah. It's a hidden gem. <laughs> My <laughs> goal. Oh, man. Halloween's a good one. Um, Halloween Ends, unfortunately, was not a good one. But that's neither here nor there. Um, <laughs> that's... <laughs> Uh, well, Booster, we want to thank you for being on the show, man, and and to come on to tell your story and and to hear your haunt story. I'm I was honestly like we've we've ran into you so many times this year at at different events and even at at knots, and it was it was finally time to be like, hey, man, this guy's a fan of us. We're a fan of him. Let's 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 collaborate and do something together. Dude, and it's my pleasure. Something. You guys are legends, and uh, we do it for you guys. We do it for the audience. Hey, man, that's. That's what we. That's what we're here for, man. We want to give the audience uh, that post haunt. You know, uh, everybody's gonna have that post haunt depression. We want to keep the haunt spirit alive year round. But in the month of November, we dedicate this month to you guys, and then this goes for all scare actors across the world um, that we have yet to meet or events we have yet to go to. Um, haunt season only comes two months out of the year, and. Uh, we have so much little time to enjoy it. There's so much to do and only so much little time to do it all in. Um, these two months go by really fast. I can't believe this. I can't believe I'm saying this, but this is already going to be the last weekend of haunt season uh, for the Halloween. And, it, and it's sad to say, but, you That's know, it's time to hang to it up. It is a hard pill to swallow, but we got to hang it up because we got bigger and better things coming for 2023. Uh, 2022 was a very great season, in my opinion. And it was a lot of it was for the talent out in the streets, wherever event they were working, in the mazes, uh, all the people that worked behind the scenes, endless days and nights to put this all together till opening day, um, even on opening day, running around, making tweaks and whatnot, but all the people behind the scenes and everything, everyone out there, it's a huge group effort, and without any of it, it doesn't get put on, and we the fans just appreciate the hell out of it. That's why we do this, because we, we want to show our thanks, and the only way we know how to show our thanks is podcasting. <laughs> More than enough. Oh, uh, we would show our things with our wallets, but our wallets are a little dry. Yeah, so we'll do the next <laughs> best thing. We'll do a whole month of podcasting and just show our love that way, which doesn't cost us much money at all. So No, just time. And time just is, time. And we have time. Yeah, Perfect. we have time now. We're going to have time now that, now that haunt season is coming to an end. But Booster, we absolutely love you, buddy, and we're glad that you're a fan of ours as well. We love to uh, interact with our fans and, and really – grow friendships with our fans because without our fans you know we wouldn't be here right now and uh, oh, yeah. keep... I, I can definitely speak for the rest of the haunted community uh we love you guys you guys are the best i appreciate that man well, i think we you, were just thank you oh i think oh, we were just... i don't want to cut you off yeah, i think we were just happy to be to have that on a lot of haunt boxes this year because that was a limited edition sticker oh yeah everywhere everywhere, everywhere. yeah and it, we were just happy to have those when we had those i was like i'm giving them out to people so Whoever those got that little sticker, I only had a hundred of those, and if you got one, you're very lucky. Um, but we got more coming with the red one, so stay tuned. With all that being said, Sammy, what's our social medias? Yeah, so if you like this video, go ahead and drop a like. Go ahead and drop a comment if you saw Booster and he scared you, and and show him some love down there. If you haven't done so already, go ahead and hit that subscribe button, um, and go hit that bell notification so you can get notified for all of character appreciation month which i believe is about 20 plus days so stay tuned it's gonna get wild it's gonna it's get gonna fun get um go ahead um, if you haven't done so already as well go ahead and follow us on twitter at the knights of horror on instagram at the knights of horror um also on tic tac uh, tic tock not tic tac tic tacs are those things you put in your pockets real good for your breath but tic tock is the thing you waste seven hours of your day on um go follow us at the knights of horror there as well Seven hours of my day. You're not wrong. I yeah. know. I think I'm everyone's on TikTok now. TikTok's been a lot, a lot of fun. We got to extend the audience out there, and we're internally grateful for how much that's grown. So very thank you to uh, us supporting us all season. And TikTok's been growing faster than we can expect, so we want to thank you for that. Uh, Booster, we want to thank you for putting your time, blood, sweat, and tears out in Carnival this year. And uh, we look forward to seeing what happens with you in 2023. Appreciate it. Keep you guys updated and uh, appreciate everything you guys do for us. One last thing. If anyone wants to keep up with you on uh, social media, where can they find you? You can find me on Instagram at Booster. It's boo.stir. 
Oh, man. Boo.stir. Go follow him on Instagram. He's got some exciting stuff in the works. You don't want to miss it when he announces it. Uh, Booster, until next year, buddy, we will uh, we'll be hiding in the fog until we'll be sleeping. So instead of, yeah, wake me up when September starts. Yeah, wake me up when September starts. Wake me up when when midsummer starts. Let's be honest. Midsummer starts, yeah. Make me up when midsummer starts. Facts. So, um, I'm your host Anthony. My co-host Sammy. Our guest today is Booster Carnival, and we will see you guys tomorrow for another Carnival surprise. Ooh. Bye.